Hello everyone, I hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more restaurants featured on 24 Hours to Hell and Back and reveal if they're still open. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys! La Serenata Run by the Rodriguez family, La Serenata is owned by Aurora, managed by her son Marco Sr., and the food is cooked by his son Marco Jr. Being located in a hotspot close to a number of movie studios, it'd be nothing but expected for there to be a lot of customers flowing in. However, it is quite the opposite since a lot of problems have sprouted since the business came to be. Like how Marco's father, who owns several successful restaurants, tragically passed away, which forced them to sell two of his businesses as well as Aurora's house since they were unable to keep up with things in his absence. Due to the grief, pain, and disorder, Aurora and Marco Sr. seemed to argue constantly which drove customers away. It was only a matter of time before La Serenata would have to close down, so they desperately reached out to Gordon Ramsay for some help. Arriving at the restaurant disguised as a French tourist with some decoy friends at his side, he is unimpressed with the grim decor. Ordering staple Mexican dishes, not only does it come back tasting disgusting, but their server is sweating so much that it drips into their food. Nasty! Having seen enough, Ramsay takes off his disguise and demands to meet with the staff so he can show them the appalling hidden footage he captured of the kitchen. They not only get the chance to see on video how toxic Marco and Aurora are to each other, but how the kitchen was serving spoiled food, had tons of expired produce, and was cross-contaminating. Collectively, the staff seems to blame all the problems on Aurora, Marco Sr., and Junior, which prompts Chef Ramsay to give them a talk. After somewhat resolving the tensions between the family members, Ramsay makes some valuable changes to the decor, menu, and kitchen. Several months later, after the show aired, it seemed like the restaurant returned to its old ways, reversing the menu Chef Ramsay proposed. The restaurant is still up and running, somehow with a solid 4 stars on Yelp, many praising the good food but others complaining about having a bad customer experience. The Old Coffee Pot Located in the busy French Quarter, the Old Coffee Pot seems to still struggle to pull customers through the door. Purchased by a man named Dustin, who previously worked there as a chef, the restaurant was frequently busy and was regarded as one of the best breakfast joints. Once being a family-owned business, that dynamic broke down and Dustin was left with becoming a full-time caretaker for all of the children. On top of this, the staff hold little respect for their boss and misbehave at any chance that he's absent. Through all this chaos, Dustin really needed the help of someone accomplished like Gordon Ramsay, so he called him over. Setting up hidden cameras all over the restaurant, Ramsay soon arrives disguised with a troupe of musicians. He orders a range of New Orleans classic dishes, which come back contaminated, old, and burnt. Throughout the service, the staff are visibly misbehaving and are ignoring patrons looking to eat a meal. Angry at all this incompetence, Ramsay takes off his disguise, introduces himself to the staff, and forces them to close down the restaurant. Showing them the hidden footage as usual, it reveals how there are rats, grime, and dirt all over the restaurant which disgusts everyone watching. What's worse, upon further inspection of the kitchen, Chef Ramsay finds rented coffee pots and a mouse corpse inside a toaster. Following the intervention of an exterminator, Ramsay makes some changes to the menu and gives the restaurant better equipment and a more fitting decor. Months after the episode aired, customers were loving the new menu and business seemed to be increasing. While there were a lot of positive reviews on Yelp with 3.5 stars, most of the complaints were about the service. Admittedly, the owner wasn't happy with some of the changes so they decided to add some of the old dishes back. Although, in the end, the old coffee pot's business began to decline and it finally closed down in February of 2019. Sherman's Restaurant Allison and Peter Nimrod, yes, that's their actual last name, purchased Sherman's restaurant back in 2012, hoping to cash in on its success. However, while the restaurant did have an existing customer base, it began to decline and their costs were increasing. The biggest reason is that their customers were complaining about the food, but are completely disregarded by the owners. Not knowing how to even start fixing this big mess they've brought themselves into, they call for Gordon Ramsay's help. In this episode, Chef Ramsay arrives disguised as a farmer with a group of local farmers at his side. Instantly, the undercover chef remarks that the decor is drab and that the restaurant smells awful. After ordering a selection of staple southern dishes, they all come back overcooked, foul, and smelly. Hilariously, Ramsay comments that the catch of the day is hepatitis B, then reveals himself to the staff and forces them to shut things down. Bringing the staff to the Hells on Wheels truck, Ramsay plays some of the hidden footage he captured. Not only is the kitchen absolutely disgusting, they reuse any ranch that isn't touched, have cockroaches crawling around, and are shown breaking multiple health code violations. To make matters worse, Ramsay inspects their kitchen only to find a sink filled with oysters and fish and a cooler packed with old food including rotting chicken meat. This very meat was used for the meal that was served to Ramsay and his friends, which is stomach turning. Following making some changes to the menu, cutting out a useless employee, and revamping the kitchen and general decor, things were finally starting to look good for Sherman's. 
Thankfully, we do have some good news in regards to this restaurant since it's still up and running to this day. Rocking a solid 4 stars on Yelp, many seem to praise the food and atmosphere, but the biggest complaint is about the prices. Sadly, several locals are unwilling to return to the new and improved restaurant due to previous experiences, though we recommend at least giving it a try. Bayou on the Vine Only having been open for a year, Bayou on the Vine is a struggling restaurant owned by Chuck and Eartha. Despite being located in a prime location where many pass by, they are on the verge of closing down. Since the restaurant isn't making any money, the owners are forced into supporting it with their own money. Due to the mounting pressure that came with the expenses, Chuck and Eartha were close to getting divorced. Needing any help they can get, they call out to the legendary chef Ramsey in hopes that he can turn things around. Arriving in a softball uniform alongside a local softball team, Ramsey is unimpressed from the get-go. The restaurant's windows are oddly tinted and the room is filled with ugly and cheap Mardi Gras decor. Attempting to order some staple Cajun dishes, everything comes back horribly overcooked and tasting rancid. Ramsey asks the entire restaurant to stop eating their food and reveals his identity to the staff, getting them to close the restaurant for the day. Bringing everyone to his truck outside, he reveals hidden footage that shows filth in the kitchen including cockroaches and puts on display the cook Sharika's frequent outbursts. Sharika reacts poorly to the footage claiming that there were never roaches in the kitchen despite there being clear evidence of the fact. After some discussion, Ramsey was able to win Sharika over which allowed him to finally make some changes. The restaurant received a new modern design, a menu with delicious dishes, and tons of equipment for the kitchen. Receiving 3.5 stars on Yelp, the restaurant was doing pretty well for the first few months. However, things seemingly went downhill with the food and service quality often being complained about and ultimately they closed down in June of 2020. Bella Giannas Family-run Italian restaurant Bella Giannas is currently owned by Vinny Vasti and Dore Vasti Barbato aka Theodora. Once being successful, after Vinny took over, the business began to fall apart along with his family relationships. Barely making any money, things got even worse when the co-owner Frankie passed away several years ago. What's worse is that Vinny has two changeable moods, with one being furious anger and the other being deep sorrow, which the staff has to endure. Being in a deep hole of problems, they call over Chef Ramsey who visits disguised as an elderly man. He's quite unimpressed with the decor, which is tacky, depressing, and makes anyone who enters feel unwelcome. Ordering a variety of dishes, when everything comes back, it tastes old, rubbery, and overall very bad. Sending back his terrible food, the chef named Lou argues with Vinny and expresses that he doesn't see a problem with the dishes. Absolutely horrified by his experience, Ramsey takes off his disguise and reveals himself to the staff and an argument breaks out between Vinny and the famous chef. After things cool down, he brings the entire restaurant outside to show them his shocking undercover footage. They have food that's rotting in the kitchen and have black mold building on the inside of their walk-in fridge. When Ramsey inspects the kitchen even further, there's something that smells foul and that makes both him and his cameraman gag. After a lot of cleaning, better decor, and new furniture, things were going in the right direction though. Today, the restaurant is still open with a solid 4 star review on Yelp. Well, that will be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.